Monkey Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, the world is not as it should be, and we waste so very, very much. Oh, sure, we waste less now that we see the end coming, but for some, it's already too late. And if we're not careful, we'll end up with the ruined earth as seen in the 2008 Pixar movie, Wally. -E. Wally -E tells the tale of the titular robot, last of a fleet of identical Earth class waste compactor bots, who finds the first green shoot of recovery in a toxic Earth, and the adventure that follows him when he befriends and falls in love with Eve, whose mission is to find the first plant life and take it as a sign to return the remnants of humanity who were evacuated on a number of space arcs back home. And as I mentioned in my Kung Fu Panda review, this was the movie that beat Kung Fu Panda to the 2008 Best Animated Picture Oscar. And why? Well, any comparison between these two movies would come down to personal preference. And my personal preference is not to talk about that, and instead, to return to the movie at hand, Wally. -E. Let us begin then at the beginning. Pixar, the former Lucasfilm spin off company that was bought by Steve Jobs and turned into the animation powerhouse it is today. And for a time, they even produced their own CGI rendering hardware. While that tale in itself, along with the entire history of these trailblazing titans of technology, would take up an entire episode, it is told elsewhere in the 2008 documentary, The Pixar Story. Our tale begins one ordinary lunchtime in 1994, in the Pixar dining space, the Luxo Cafe. Directors John Lasseter, Pete Docter, Andrew Stanton and the late Joe Ranft spent a productive lunchtime bouncing ideas off one another. These ideas became the movies Finding Nemo, Monsters Inc, and A Bug's Life. The last idea came from Stanton himself. What if, he supposed, in the rush to leave Earth, somebody forgot to turn off the last robot? This seedling of an idea became the sapling of a movie under the working title Trash Planet. The vegetation initiative that brings Eve to Earth, the sole plant that thrives in the wasteland, was born of the idea of flowers blossoming through cracks in the pavement, and the idea that life will find a way. The romance, Eve and Wally's blossoming if slightly awkward relationship, can be seen as a natural progression of the idea of a lonely robot on a deserted world. And so it was that in 2003, the movie was greenlighted with the help of a 20 minute animatic. I would show you, but I haven't come across it in the course of my research. Now, what I think makes this movie so very special is the mood of the piece. The feel of a desolate, deserted earth. The day-to-day -day activities of the last left-on robot, who's gained sentience, and actually has some semblance of a life. And a large chunk of this movie, both on Earth and when they move into space, is entirely without dialogue. But you don't feel it. Every beep, every chirp, every single noise made by Wally and Eve, it actually corresponds to a line of dialogue in the original script. And yet, they chose not to use dialogue. And this was quite a bold move in my own opinion and would require some top quality sound design. Then again, top quality sound design is what Disney's all about. And luckily for Pixar, they'd secured the services of a top quality sound designer. In 2005, legendary sound designer Ben Burtt had just finished working on the last of the Star Wars prequels. And with this, he had sworn off robots. And then, along came Andrew Stanton and the Pixar boys, with more robots? A recipe for disaster, or so you'd think. In actual fact, Bert took them up on this offer, finding himself not relegated to an afterthought of post-production, 
but actually involved in the metaphorical white-hot furnace of production itself. Working in sync with the animators, shuttling ideas back and forth, and only choosing dramatic noises when scientifically accurate sounds weren't available. Bert even lent his own voice to the titular bot, and several others, though heavily filtered. The voice of Eve was portrayed by Pixar staffer Elisa Knight, though again filtered heavily. Of course, there was one real robot actor in this film. The Apple Mac in Talk program voices the autopilot of the spacecraft Axiom, where the atrophied remains of humanity reside. This, as far as I'm aware, represents the first true use of an entirely digital sin thespian in American cinema. Moving from the worlds of the virtual to the all too real, Wally is science fiction. And science fiction can sometimes be a thematic exploration of certain issues. And so it is with Wally. -E. The themes in question are relentless consumerism and ecological collapse. Having talked about the sound design, let us not forget that the movie is also visually sumptuous not least due to Stanton's wish to recreate the cinematic conventions of the introverted 1970s sci-fi movies. Movies such as Dark Star and the original Alien. Indeed, depth of field was extensively researched in the pre-production, and the results really give this film a personal, introspective feel, even as the greater drama is played out against the infinite canvas of space. Of course, we must eventually discuss the by and large corporation for its branding is everywhere on the ruined earth. The tale of a company that was too successful became a monopoly and caused a catastrophe the likes of which Earth had never seen before. And on the starship Axiom, humanity has become a parody of itself, as microgravity and bone loss have turned us into oversized babies, reliant on machinery for our every need. Which makes it all the more dramatic when the captain stands up to his autopilot. Literally. And really, this is what I wanted to talk about most. Consumerism. I mean, I wouldn't argue that your transnational and multinational corporations were inherently good or evil. I mean, they're just trying to stay in business. But this is the problem. And no real business, actually right down to the humble corner shop, has an inherent right to exist. I mean, if your product is unpopular, if your product is harmful, if you're not making a product that people need, then you go out of business, because people aren't buying it. And there isn't enough advertising in the world to make people buy something that's going to kill them. At least, not something that's going to kill them quickly or almost immediately. Of course, a lot of consumerism is driven by advertising. Advertising tells us we need the new thing, we buy the new thing, and then we find out we didn't need the new thing after all. But maybe, in the 21st century, we're finally beginning to see the man behind the curtain, so to speak. And I hope that we are. Because then, we can go back to buying the things that we actually do need, instead of all the rubbish that we don't. And so, I'll close out in the usual manner, with a short summary of my final thoughts. Beyond the sound design, the technological achievements of virtual depth of field, the allegories of rampant consumerism, reliance on automation and towing the company line, Wally is, at its core, a sweet tale of two robots that fall in love and the transformative power of that love, even at the end of the world. And I can sit here and debate the pros and cons of all the underlying themes, the obsessions that plague our world, and the ultimate course we've plotted for humanity as a whole. But you know what? I'd much rather talk about a rip-roaring adventure with cute robots, pulse-pounding action, real dramatic tension, and a climax that, as all the best movies do, reaffirms our independence from cyber nannying. I could talk about the ponderousness of sci-fi, but I'd much rather talk about Pixar's sci-fi spectacular, Wally. -E. I'm Funky Monkey, reminding you to reduce, reuse, and recycle. So long, folks.